All right, I picked up a little outboard for the budget build and it fits the budget part of the budget build, which is a good thing because I've kind of blown a few things out of the water with stuff I put on it here recently. I acquired this motor from my brother. He was doing some work on a woman's house. Uh, it was actually her boyfriend's who died and she asked him if, if he knew anybody that might be interested. And he, text, he texted me that, that she wanted X amount of dollars for it. And I said, that's too much, but you know, I might be interested for this much money. And she said, yes, and I got it. I didn't even ask if it ran or anything, which I guess I should have. But uh, being that it was her boyfriend's motor who died, <laughs> she probably wouldn't know. Uh, but the good thing about it is it's a Yamaha and uh, I haven't heard any bad things about Yamaha motors. It is not exactly a powerhouse. <laughs> that being said, let's take a look at it. There she is. Three horses right there confined in that little hood. I looked up the the numbers on it it is a 1992 yamaha it's a two-stroke and it's actually a saltwater engine by the the code on it so i mean that's kind of cool you know really won't help me out in fresh water but uh these saltwater engines are just built a little tougher to withstand the salt and the conditions so it'll be fine for fresh water i don't know anything about it um, I took the hood off and that's as far as I've gotten cool because it's got room for a gas tank It seems to have good compression by pulling on it. It's just a little one-cylinder motor uh, well, The reason why I say it's cool. It's got a gas tank. You see I got a, a fuel cell right here and It doesn't really fit in the back of my boat. I have to mind my mess. I haven't cleaned up back here But Yamaha's uh, man, they're, a lot of people say they're indestructible. I mean, I have a Yamaha on my G3. I absolutely love it. Haven't had an ounce of trouble out of the motor. Um, but I want to do this the right way. Uh, this g gas tank, I did open it up. And it's got a little sludge in it. and try to clean it out. And I'd like to take the bowl off the carburetor, but the carburetor is right there. So I think this lower cowl comes off. So I'd like to pop it off and at least get the bowl of the carburetor off. Maybe sp spray a little cleaner in it. Make sure everything looks like it's working properly at least. Now, uh, three horse isn't gonna make this thing fly, obviously. But I mean, this boat is rated for a three horsepower motor. I think you can still see it on the badge. Yeah, three horsepower. Now that was the boat without all the stuff we've added to it. But, I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think we're gonna run mile per hour on this? I'm still gonna put a trailer motor up here. I'm yet to get one of those yet. But as far as weight, you know, we're pretty much done with that. I'd like to say five miles per hour. What do y'all think? I gave $300 for this motor and that is not I don't think that's an absolute steal. I mean, outboards go for about $100 a horsepower. The bad thing about it, these small outboards just, they don't have a, a big market, you know? Not too many people are looking for them. Now, uh, six to nine, nine and up, yeah, and, you know, you can put that on a lot more boats. Really a six to, to 15, you can get a lot more money for. You know, you get over 15, you're kind of limiting you know, you're, kind of, you're gonna need a bigger boat for something that size. But, you know, you're gonna need a small boat or a skiff or a little dinghy or something to put a motor like this on. A lot of times they'll run these motors on them little rubber boats. But anyways, I thought it was a pretty decent deal. Um, like I said, it fit the budget, 300 bucks. I was wanting to try to find something for around 500 bucks. So I saved a little money by going this route. All right, uh, let's dig into it and see if we can't clean up and get it running. I went ahead and just pulled the whole carb off. It's actually pretty clean. It's got some tarnish around here, but everything on the inside looks good. Gaskets look good. Uh, 
Went ahead and pulled the float out of it and the jet. The jet's clear, but it does got a little bit of tarnish in there. And float bowl's got a little of that tarnish. Oh, just old gas. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clean these up with some carburetor cleaner and put it all back together. And I think we should be pretty much good to go other than cleaning that gas tank. I went ahead and just took the gas tank off and sprayed some carburetor cleaner in there and just kind of let it sit. It's got a little filter right here, like on the inside. Just let it sit over a bowl and let it kind of run out into it. And I'm gonna try to take a rag and maybe a screwdriver and just kind of see what else I can get out of there, which is, it got most of the sludge out, but as you can see, it's still a little funk in there. We'll get it out and we put it back on. All right, here we go. Give it some choke. Well, Let's see if it's got spark. Got a good spark. Ah, I think I figured out what was wrong, I hope. Um, I took the car back off again, and I realized I had the, the gasket flipped around the wrong way, I think. So, uh, hopefully, this is going to get it. Third time's a charm, maybe. Let's see. Man. All right. Well, after throwing my shoulder out, messing with this dig on outboard, I end up taking the carburetor off again and just going through everything. Took the jets out, made sure they were clear, made sure nothing was wrong with the float, uh, the pin, put it all back together, and then now it wants to run. <laughs> so I, I, I'd love to tell you guys what it was, but I, I really don't know. I hate small engines. Uh, you would think that a small engine with everything being small and easy to get to, that would be easier to work on. But I swear, I would much rather work on a car engine than a small engine. I took a little break. I worked on another small engine. I changed the oil in my lawnmower, put some new blades on it, and cut my grass. So now I'm soaking wet. And come back and threw the lower cowl on and went ahead and put the top cowl back on this. And fingers crossed, they're just going to crank up and run. Let's hope.
All right, so the motor I got for this boat is a short shaft motor, but these boats just really aren't designed really to have an outboard motor on it, at least not with performance in mind. What you really want is you want this right here to be flush with the bottom of your boat right here or really close to it. You want to be within two inches, either flush or two inches below is the sweet spot. And right now it's about two inches low. So what I've done is I went ahead and got on online metals and ordered a one and three quarter by one and three quarter piece of tubing that I'm gonna attach to the top. So that's gonna lift it up and get it very close. So that's gonna be good. So or holding off on that as far as mounting the motor. But another thing that I'd like to do is this thing, this transom just, it only has two bolts on each side. And then of course the handles or two more bolts, but they're up, up towards the top. So what I wanna go ahead and do is add two bolts right here, just 5 16 bolts all the way through with fender washers. I mean, we're not gonna be <laughs> flexing this transom off of that powerful three horsepower motor, but who knows, one day somebody might add something to it like a six and a half horsepower hang kai, four stroke. But uh, let's go ahead and do that. We'll put some uh, silicone in the holes and then put it on, like I said, with fender washers, all stainless steel hardware and try to draw that transom up and make everything a little bit more solid. said I'm gonna try to build this up a little bit that way it picks the outboard up and this is the piece of metal I got it's just one and three quarter by one and three quarter aluminum and I'm just gonna put it right here and what I plan on doing is cutting an angle maybe a 45 on each side that way I can just do a self tapping screw or bolt and right into the transom the top of the transom and then what I plan on doing is going back and tacking it in in a few places with a welder. And I mean, I think that'll be fine. A uh, little bit nervous about welding and welding aluminum isn't the easiest thing to do if you don't do it a lot. So uh, wish me luck. Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. Let's not talk about my welding skills right here, but uh, let's just say I got it on there. It sure ain't pretty, but <laughs> a little bit of pain will 
will uh, make it look a lot better. Man, I just cannot get that thing to to set right. I, just, I really need to just practice on stuff. I don't use it until I need it, and then I get upset because I can't figure it out. And I also burned a few holes down here. We're going to have to replace that. Good thing I got extra of that. That was a... Uh, putting that piece of wood down was a little late on my part. But anyhow, we got it on there. And like I said, it's not pretty, but it is going to do the job. And it'll look better once we get it painted and cleaned up. Now let's go ahead and do that. All right, we got a couple coats on it. It don't look too bad. Went ahead and fixed that hydro turf that y'all melted yesterday too. All right, let's uh, throw this motor on. You can see we're, I don't know, bay, what is that, maybe an inch and a half below the boat, which not bad. A whole lot better than what it was, so we're going to call that good. Well, all right, we got it on there, and uh, we got it at the right height, so I'm going to stick a fork in this one. Now, got the motor running good, <laughs> finally. Uh, you, it wouldn't be a, a crisp boat build unless I had some kind of pushback from my janky outboard. Man, uh, small motors just do not get along very good if you watch any of my previous videos. But uh, I think it works out good. You know, it looks decent on the boat. I wish it was different color. I'm really having to show some restraint by not sanding that thing down and painting it. I really wish I could paint it black and put some different decals on it. Maybe use some of that decals that I did for the, the back of the boat. <laughs> I think that would look cool, do my own decals. Uh, which, you know, maybe I will. Uh, that's more money, more time. Um, we'll have to see what happens. You know, if I don't sell it, I might uh, I might explore that option. Like I said, I'm, I'm happy that I got the motor. You know, three horse is not much to brag about, but I don't expect anybody to take this boat out on one of the Great Lakes either, so. I mean, if you're just fishing little lakes and sloughs, three horse, a gallon of gas is probably all you're really going to need. Probably not going to be wanting to tow anybody on a tube or a slalom behind your 10-foot John boat anyways. So, that's what we got. Uh, three horse Yamaha, 300 bucks. We'll add that to the cost. That's all I really had. I mean, I ain't going to add gas to it. Uh, all I did, you know, I had all the other stuff laying around, carb cleaner and all that. And that's all I really did. I guess I could add that piece of metal I, I added to the transom, but I mean, it wasn't 100% necessary. I mean, you could have used really anything and bolted it down like I did. I, like I said, with a three horse, I don't really think that, you know, you're going to be torquing too much to where you got to worry about, you know, <laughs> having that thing welded on there like I did, which I mean, I could have welded the whole thing solid and it probably look a little bit better, but that would be kind of overkill, I believe. But... Um, I can't remember how much I paid for that piece of metal. I'll put it down here and with the $300, we'll add it to the total and uh, we're still under budget and looking decent. But uh, as of right now, I've already got the trailer motor and I didn't do a very good job of staying on budget with it. But hopefully, you know, since I, I came in $200 on the motor under, you know, what I was really wanting to, it kind of offsets each other. So. Uh, we'll we'll add it up next week and that will be next week's video is putting the trailer motor on it'll probably be another you know full video just of doing that because i got to run wires to the back we'll put a battery tray in wire the trailer motor up i got to build a a little box for the trailer motor to lift it up off the floor so it, that'll be enough to make a whole video then the next video will should be uh, I need to go to like Walmart and just pick up some little odds and ends thing like rope and probably get some tile some maybe some of them little bungee rod holders for it. I think that would be good for this little boat. And uh, then we'll be taking it out. So two more videos I believe and we'll be wrapping this series up. I'm already trying to find my next build so I can keep things rolling. Well, Alright guys, I really appreciate you watching. See you on the next one.